the Mountain Slaughter Garage. In this episode, we're going to talk about Polaris axis belt deflection. Now, this pertains to the 800 and the 850. You can even use this in, pertain in pertaining to your Pro RMK models from the 2011 to 2015 models. The belt deflection is really important. A lot of people don't understand the why it's important. It can really affect how your snowmobile runs from clutch engagement all the way to the top end. We're going to talk about why that, how that works and why that's important. Not only are we going to talk about a little about how to adjust your belt deflection, but so we're going to zoom in here on this snowmobile here, look at the belt deflection, talk about uh, why it's important and how to do it. Okay, now you can see on this snowmobile, see how much play I have in this belt? That's way too much. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. People say they don't want more than maybe an inch, inch and a half of movement in the belt. I actually like to tighten this as tight as possible. If you tighten it too tight, one or two things is gonna happen or maybe even bolt. The belt's gonna screech a little bit as it rubs in the primary as your engine's idling. And or when you're sitting on a flat surface, the belt's gonna be tight enough that the primary clutch grips it a little bit and your, and your snowmobile's gonna creep forward a little bit. So that's too tight, either of those situations. So I like to get it just to where almost those situations occur. I like to run the belt as tight as possible. And that means the belt is running up here in the secondary clutch as high as possible. What that's gonna do, that's gonna get our clutch started out in its very lowest gear possible which I really like on a mountain sled because you really want that on and off throttle response really quick. You don't want this to be starting in a higher gear than you want it to, especially from a dead stop. I mean, think of it as if you have a 10 speed bicycle. If you're starting from a dead stop, you don't want to start in second or third gear. You want to start in first, the very lowest gear, especially if you're going uphill. It's the same thing with your snowmobile. When you're at a dead stop, you want to have this start in the lowest gear possible. And this is essentially just a transmission system. Even though there's no set gears like one, two, three, and four, you're pretty much going from the lowest gear possible to the highest gear possible. And the highest gear possible on this setup is pretty much one to one. That means your crankshaft is spinning the same speed as your jack shaft, the mean a one to one ratio um, of those two components. So if your crankshaft is spinning at 8,200 RPMs, that also means your jack shaft should be spinning at 8,200 RPMs. On a mountain side, you're probably never gonna see that. You're probably never gonna be going that fast, 70 or 80 miles an hour to get that complete ratio. That's when your belt is clear up here in the very top of your primary clutch and it's down here in the bottom of your secondary clutch. But anyway, so to adjust that, we're gonna rotate our secondary clutch around to where we can get to this bolt and, and Allen headed screw here. Our box end wrench, put it on there. If you use a box end, it grips it a little bit better, I've found. Unlock that bolt. And then in order to tighten the belt deflection, we're gonna loosen this bolt. And I'm pretty loose already, so I'm gonna loosen that a fair amount, like it was probably about one complete turn. And then I'm gonna tighten the lock nut up. And then we're gonna rotate this around. What you're gonna see when I rotate this, you see how far my belt is almost, the top of the belt's almost even up here with the top of the clutch. As we rotate this, as this tightens, you're gonna see the ribs are gonna raise above the clutch so it's tightening. So we're just gonna rotate this a little bit. And you can see now that we've set the belt deflection, it's a little bit tighter. My ribs have come up about an eighth of an inch over the top of my clutch. And that's quite a bit tighter. So I'm gonna go maybe another half a turn, unscrew this, probably about a half a turn, and then we're gonna tighten the lock nut back down again and we'll rotate. And we're, we're pretty high up. We are pretty high up here, our belt above the edge of the secondary clutch. Um, so now the one way to test this is to start it. And so we're gonna start this and see where we're at. If it's too tight, the secondary clutch will turn as the primary clutch sits in idle. So we'll start it. We'll see what that, how that works. So as you can as you can see, I mean there's a little bit of tension on my belt, but it's not turning my clutch. So, but you can see, I, I mean it's pretty tight, and that's kind of where I like to run it, where it's tight enough 
that it idles, it doesn't squeal. The belts rub it on the clutch a little bit, but if it's too tight, it will squeal as the, as the clutch turns when you're sitting at idle. It's not turning my secondary clutch, so that's really where I like to be on this. Okay, now I've got a Polaris primary clutch off one of my 850s hooked into the vise here on a, on a rotating shaft, so you can just kind of see it turn. Normally there's a cover plate right here with the spring in right here, and it's that spring that holds this. This is the movable sheave. This spring holds the movable sheave all the way open while you're at idle. And what's happening inside your clutch, when you hit the gas and this starts to rotate, the clutch weight, which sits in here about like that, the centrifugal force, the faster this spins, it starts moving this out like that, pushing these sheaths together. When your belt is in here, your belt deflection is where it's supposed to be, this movable sheath barely moves at all before it engages the belt and starts turning. That's your belt engagement, RPM. But what you're gonna see is your belt wears, and as your, or as your belt deflection, more and more out of adjustment. Let's just say, you can see how much this is out of adjustment here, it's pretty loose. This is how much my sheath has to move before it engages the belt. So what's happening there is this flyweight, this has to spin more and more. It has to overcome more and more tension on the spring and your RPM has to raise more before this spins out here and engages the belt. So you're gonna have your clutch engagement at a much higher RPM than if your belt is tight and your belt deflection is where it's supposed to be. So that's one symptom of a really loose belt. You might notice that um, one day you're riding your son off, your clutch engagement is at 4,500 RPM instead of like 3,800 RPM like it was the week before. One of the things to check, your belt could be worn or your belt deflection could be out or both. Uh, also, it can cause you to have kind of a rush start when the belt engages, because instead of this engaging at 35 or 3,800 RPM, it might be engaging at 4,500 RPM or even 5,000 RPM, and that's gonna grab the belt. Since the engine's spinning quicker when it grabs it, it's gonna feel like your machine jerks a little bit when it engages. So those are a couple of things you may notice. We talked a little about the flyweights. The flyweights sit in here kind of like this. This thing right here is called the spider. There's a roller right here in the spider. You wanna make sure all your rollers are good if you ever take this apart. This flyweight sits in here about like this when it's at rest and the roller sits about right there. And under normal conditions, if everything's working correctly and everything's right, your roller's gonna start right there, your engine's gonna spin, and this is gonna to start to move forward like this as your engine moves. As it goes back down, you let off the gas, you're at idle again. When you hit the gas again, this is gonna to start to move. But what happens if you have too much belt deflection or your belt sheath clearance is too far off, this weight is gonna to have to move more before it starts to push the roller out. So what's gonna happen, instead of your belt engaging right here and your machine start moving right here, your clutch or your weight is about right here when your clutch engages the belt. And that is not where it's designed to be. And so that's gonna throw off all of the relationship between your roller, your weight, and your primary and secondary clutch throughout your RPM range if that engages and starts moving the roller out of proportion of where it's supposed to from right here to right there. So we're gonna go over to the whiteboard. We're gonna show you a little bit more how this works with the ratios of the primary and secondary clutch. And hopefully you understand this a little bit more about what's going on in your sled. Okay, and if we look at these drawings that I've put up here on the whiteboard, kind of very simplistic, kind of like a stick figure man. So this is our primary clutch. Put a P up there. Secondary clutch back here. This is where our engine is that's rotating the primary clutch here. It's the same on all three of these diagrams. So when we're at idle and we're at rest, we're in the lowest gear possible. This is the smallest diameter here and the biggest diameter there. We want that ratio. That's why we want our belt as high up in here as we can. The higher up the belt gets in this gear, the lower our initial ratio is gonna be. The smaller it gets over here, the lower our ratio is gonna be. So we're gonna start in the lowest gear possible. Then, as we shift out, you know, the belt's gonna, the primary clutch is gonna squeeze this belt this diameter is gonna grow and get bigger. This diameter is gonna shrink and get smaller till you end up to this, where the purple line is your belt. Most clutches, you end up in a one-to-one -one ratio where the diameter here of the belt and the diameter there is the same. That means that the crankshaft speed is gonna be the same as your jackshaft speed. The problem is, 
when you have too loose of a belt, what's going to happen is when you start out, instead of your belt being tied around the crankshaft there, your belt might start out right here. And then when it goes up here, it might start out down there. So if we're saying this is first gear, maybe this is 10th gear. This is maybe second or maybe even third gear. That's what you're starting out in instead of starting out in first gear. And what's going to happen when this shifts all the way out and this belt is up here, you're, you have too much belt play and this isn't going to be able to get into this gear. It's going to end up in a little bit lower gear so your top speed isn't going to be as fast either. So you're, you mess up from low gear to high gear if your belt is too loose and everything in between there is not in sync or the way that it was designed to be in. So your engine has to work harder to turn your track. Um, the power to your track is not going to be the same as if you have your belt deflection set properly. Okay, now there's another situation with your belt that I want to make you aware of that can kind of cause your clutch and your Polaris to kind of act like the belt's too loose. Even though your belt deflection set correctly and is tight enough, um, if your belt to sheath clearance is too loose, it can also make your relationship between your roller and your flyweight not correct and your fly and your clutching system will lose efficiency. You'll lose your bottom end and you will lose <clears throat> your top end as well. So what I mean by that is as your belt sticks in your clutch here, there's actually a correct amount of play you need in between your sheath here and your belt. And the correct amount of play is 20 to 30,000. The narrower that gap gets, the more efficient your primary clutch is going to be. Because what happens is, when you have too big of a gap there, your cl primary clutch starts to close like this before it even engages the belt. <clears throat> we talked about this relationship between your weight and your roller. If your primary clutch, your movable sheath has to move before it engages the belt, it puts your weight and roller in a different relationship that's not right for starting in the low gear you're starting in. And that's going to mess up how your clutches perform. It's going to mess up how the power from your engine is transferred through your clutches, through your drive system, through your track, and it's not going to work as efficiently. So what you want to do to check that, feeler gauge, and you want to put it in between, move the belt all the way over to one side and see how much space you have in between the sheath and the belt. I've got a 22,000 feeler gauge and a 23,000, so I've got I've got 45,000 of space here, and that's probably because this is an old belt; it's fairly worn. But that's a little bit too much. You really want between 20 and 30 thousandths. Now the problem with that is, if you're off, you have to pull your entire clutch apart. This is your clutch spider. You have to unscrew that. There's some shims that go between the spider. You can see this brass or gold looking washer here. You need to put shims in there, either put them in or take them out to adjust that belt to sheath clearance back to correct spec. Now there some, are some things that can affect that belt to sheath clearance. One, a very worn belt. That's why sometimes if you put a new belt in the machine, you replace a worn belt, your machine will work sometimes a lot better because your old belt is worn and your sheath is having to move before it even engages and touches the belt. Another situation, if you have the wrong belt in your machine and the width of the belt is not correct for your clutch, that can affect it. Also, you can affect that by putting different weights in your clutch. Sometimes the weight where it rests at, at a stop here isn't designed the same as the weights that come in your clutch. So if you ever change weights and it just doesn't seem right, like the belt's dragging on here or it's, the engagement isn't the same, measure your belt to sheath clearance because your weight can affect your belt to sheath clearance if you change weights. So there are a few things that can affect that belt to sheath clearance. So you want to make sure you check that clearance, make sure it's within spec. If you want your clutching system to work most efficiency, that clearance has to be correct and your belt deflection has to be correct. That way you're going to be transferring the most power your engine can make through your clutch system, through your drivetrain system to your track and your snowmobile is going to perform at its maximum potential. So as we talked about, belt to sheath clearance and your belt deflection are two critical features that you can adjust on your Polaris snowmobile CVT drive system that will help your clutch system work the most efficiently. 
There's some other things you want to look out for. We're going to have some videos coming up on those. The other one is if you want your belt to last and wear evenly and your clutching system to work as best it can, your clutches need to be in alignment. Your rear clutch needs to be in alignment in proper spec with the front clutch and you don't want it one cockeyed from the other. There's these clutch alignment tools you can buy to help you align the front clutch to the back clutch. We've gotten brand new snowmobiles and they've been way off from the factory to where your belt was gonna have a lot of premature wear. Your belt might only last two or 300 miles. This is from a company called TRS Formants. The guy that owns it, his name's Tony. Spectacular guy, he makes some, a lot of really good clutching components for your Polaris clutch. He lives up by Cook City, Montana. He probably rides thousands of miles a year testing Polaris's and coming out with some clutch components. Um, this is his clutch alignment bar. I've been using his clutch systems and his clutch alignment bar for a few years now, and my belts have never lasted longer than when I've used his clutch alignment bar. You can find him on Snow West in the Polaris section. You can also find him on uh, Facebook, TRS Performance. Um, you can order some of his stuff through them. So look for that one in the next couple of weeks. The other thing we're going to do is show you how to maintain your Polaris primary clutch. There's some basic things you can do to keep it working in optimum performance. We're gonna talk about how to man clean your clutch, how to keep the flyweights, bushings, how to replace those. That's the main things that will wear on this clutch. So look for that video coming up soon. Probably do All right, now before we finish the video, there's a couple of things I wanted to just go over and review with you before we're done, just to make sure that you understand them. Um, so the things to look for or symptoms your snowmobile might have if your belt deflection is too loose or if your belt to sheath clearance is too loose. Um, you might lose your top end, a couple hundred or even more RPM. It's not gonna pull as hard on the top end. It's gonna feel a little bit sluggish pulling from the bottom end to the top end. The other symptoms you can have is the bottom end is just gonna feel like it when you hit the gas, it's gonna engage really rough or abruptly. You're gonna notice your engagement RPM has increased even a couple hundred, 300, even a thousand RPM. So those are things you might notice if, you're, if your belt deflection is too loose or if your belt to sheath clearance is too big. The other thing that you wanna look at is people will ask, well, how often do I need to check this? Like as far as regular maintenance? And I don't know if there's a great answer for it. Depends how many miles you're putting on your sled, um, how hard those miles are, <clears throat> how much wear you're gonna have on your belt and your other components. But as a general rule of thumb, Every time you check the oil, you're gonna be in there anyway. You're gonna pull your side panel off. You're gonna be right there where your belt and your clutch are putting the oil in. You might as well get in the habit of checking this every time that you pull the side panel off to put oil and just reach down there, um, touch your belt and see how loose it is. And you'll, and you'll get a feel for how much, how much you need to tighten it just by looking at it every time you put oil in your snowmobile. So those are the kind of things you wanna be looking out for. Video's coming up. The next one we're gonna do is the alignment bar video. Uh, perfect clutch alignment will help your belt last longer. It'll help it not generate as much heat and uh, just help your, belt, your belts in your clutches perform to the maximum potential and not lose power through your CVT system in belt heat and belt wear. So look for that video coming up. We're also gonna do some other videos on Polaris clutch maintenance as we go through this Polaris clutch maintenance um, video series. So look for those coming up. Glad that you tuned into Mount Slayer's Garage. Continue watching the videos if you like them. Share them with your friends and family members or on the other social media you see. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube videos down here in the corner. The little red button that says subscribe on it. And we'll see you next time at Mount Slayer's Garage.